Now that we're done building out the app, we really have one more step that I want to go through. So we've had this kind of development cycle where we've been working on two different types of apps. We have the back end Spring Boot app, and then we have the front end Angular app. And so they're really two independent apps running at the same time connecting to each other. What I want to do now is actually walk through that step that I showed you in the beginning where we can build the Angular app, which then calls Webpack to bundle up all the assets and push them into the resources static directory of the Spring Boot app so that we could just run the Spring Boot app and test out our application and then go ahead and package that up and deploy it as one particular one p one app so what we're gonna look at here is our package.json we have these different scripts that we can run and we're gonna go ahead and add to these before I do so I just wanna mention a book Yakov Fain and this is where I kinda of picked up this tip from uh, so thank you Yakov for, for the awesome idea here but if you get a chance, please check out Angular 2 Development with TypeScript. It is a really good book, and I highly recommend it. So with that, we'll come back to our package.json, and we're just going to add some new scripts. So before we actually build something, or when we actually build something, we can do a post build. And so this is going to run after we build. And all we're going to do here is npm run deploy which is going to be a new script we're going to add so we're going to add a ploy script and that's going to do something and before we deploy I actually want to run a pre-deploy and that is going to do something so let's talk about pre-deploy first we're actually going to run a couple of commands to do something and let's just copy and paste this in here so this rim rif is going to look at a directory and then make a new directory. So this is basically removing a directory and then creating one. And to do so, we're actually using some packages that we don't have installed. So if we check out npm, we can go rmi rif and you'll see that there's a package there that is similar to the unix command rm-rf. So we need to get a couple packages installed. So let's go ahead and npm install dash dash save dev. And we're going to do this for rim raf. And that's installed. We should see this. Go ahead and update our dev dependencies, which it does. And let's do one more. So same thing, but we're going to do make dir p. And so what this is going to do, it's going to remove the directory resources static and then make the directory. Essentially, it's just clearing it out for us. So once it's cleared out, then we want to do one more thing. So again, we've already built our Angular project. So what we want to do is we want to copy the files from the distribution folder, which is where Angular places everything, so star star, and we want to copy everything into our static folder. Now, as you can imagine, we're going to need one more here, which is the copy files package. And so now what we do is we're going to run build, which is going to call ng build, we're going to run post build after that builds, which then calls our deploy script. And before deploy runs, it's going to run pre deploy. So now let's test this out. So let's run npm run build. And what this should do again is run all of these commands. And the ultimate output here is going to be uh, our packaged application being thrown into the static folder under resources. And if that happens, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just start up our Spring Boot app on localhost 8080, and then we can navigate to there, and that actually runs the index.html in the static folder. So here we go. Let's see, run deploy, pre-deploy, RIMF, copy files from dist, should be good. 
So now if we look in static, here's all of our bundles. Here's our index.html. Everything looks good. So let's go over to run and go ahead and run this. And like I said, if this starts up, we should be able to go to localhost 8080. And when we go to slash, remember it's going to serve up a HTML, index.html that's in the static folder. So this should just start and run our application. And there we go. So everything is, check that out. Everything is working as we would expect it. And again, that was just us packaging up our Angular app into our Spring Boot app. Now we have a single app that we could take and we could create a jar, we could create a war, take it and deploy it somewhere else. Now we have one application that we're working with. Now I personally, in development, I work with the two separate applications. It's just easier. But again, I, as I said in the beginning, you may have scenarios where you're only working on a Spring Boot app and maybe you have a front end team that's working on the front end app. And so in those two scenarios, at some point, these need to become one. Maybe they don't, but in my case, they did. So that's just a little quick tip that I picked up on how to kind of have the two applications in the same project, and then at the end, go ahead and build them and come up with something that you could use as a single app. So I hope that helped out, and I think we're going to close this section out, but in the next lesson, I just want to quickly talk about why we did this exercise in walking through developing this TASS application. So I'll see you in the next one.